Well, a bombshell letter or report has just emerged from a Canadian member of Parliament, Larry Maguire. In this letter, Maguire reveals that the Canadians, along with the other Five Eyes Alliance, the U.S., New Zealand, Australia, and the U.K., have UFOs, or UAPs, from other worlds, off-world vehicles, and they are actively reverse engineering these craft, and then, of course, covering it up. Uh, Dr. Michael Sala is one of the world's leading experts on this subject. He writes at exopolitics.org, and he writes about intergovernmental politics and this exact subject, and he joins us now. Dr. Sala, welcome back to the show. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. So this, before we get into the details of this letter and what this member of parliament has said, what is this, what is the Five Eyes Alliance for our viewers who might not know what this means? Well, the Five Eyes Alliance is an alliance of uh, five English-speaking countries that were allied with uh, the British in some way, former colonies. So as you you mentioned, uh, Britain, uh, you have the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and they cooperate in a, a range of intelligence and research projects going all the way back to the Second World War. And uh, today they have been identified as with these UAP study groups and that their letter by Larry Maguire implicates them in actually having some kind of uh, reverse engineering program um, that's currently being conducted. So what is, what, are the, what is the contents of Larry Maguire's letter here? We'll put it up on the screen. What stands out to you? Well, there are a few things that stood out there. It was a letter to the National Defence Minister of Canada, and Maguire is a current MP for the Canadian Parliament. And he was concerned that uh, the AUKUS alliance, which is uh, a treaty or an agreement between Australia, the United Kingdom and the US, which is a defence treaty designed primarily to deal with uh, China in the Pacific, that they are making moves to reveal the existence of some kind of alien reverse engineering program. And for some reason, Canada and New Zealand have been kind of left out of that particular loop. And that with AUKUS making an announcement in the near future, that uh, Canada would look very foolish if it didn't introduce greater transparency regarding UAPs, UFOs, and any kind of reverse engineering studies that they have been involved in. So this letter was released in March of this year, and it said that by May, uh, the Canadian government really should take steps to release some information about what the Canadians have been doing regarding UAPs. So he was really warning the Canadian government that, you know, they, they really need to be proactive here. Otherwise, they'll be kind of left in the wake as Australia, the UK and the US take the lead in revealing what's going on concerning UAPs and their reverse engineer, reverse engineering. So you two, two questions there. Number one, well, number one, what specifically do you think the AUKUS and the Five Eyes countries are going to release? What do you think that they will say in this announcement? And number two, what has Canada been doing that they feel maybe they should be a part of this conversation and at the table, otherwise they might be left in the lurch? In your research on Canada, what, uh, you know, have you heard from whistleblowers? Have you heard from uh, members of the government who've come forward to you on what that reverse engineering program looks like in Canada? So first on the AUKUS question, well, as far as AUKUS is concerned, I mean, this is, I think, a kind of cooperation between these three countries that kind of share information at the highest level, uh, you know, not only concerning nuclear secrets, because one of the big developments over the last year was this um, agreement between the UK, Australia and the US for US, for Australia to acquire some nuclear submarines, Virginia-class submarines, and that these these would be built in Australia and that nuclear secrets would be shared. I think that was a, a kind of way to indicate not just that Australia would be let in as a country or read in as a country to these uh, kind of like highest tier level secrets concerning a UFO or, uh, sorry, nuclear technologies, but that Australia would actually also be read in at that highest level concerning UAP secrets. Because, uh, you know, one of the things about the the classified uh, projects is that uh, when it comes to 
the, the, the most secretive classified programs concerning the reverse engineering and the um, production of these uh, UAP or flying saucer craft that you have less classified acting as a cover for that. That was something Edward Snowden uh, released about a decade ago with, with uh, uh, those NSA releases. So what we have here is that with this nuclear agreement between Australia, Britain and the US, that the nuclear secrets is a kind of less classified level. It's an entry level, if you like, to these deeper secrets concerning a reverse engineering of classified spacecraft that were, that are being retrieved, presumably from extraterrestrials. So what this letter from Maguire signifies is that you have this, out of the, the Five Eyes nations, Australia, the UK and, and the US are read in at that highest level in terms of what's going on in uh, these uh, reverse engineering programs, whereas Canada and New Zealand are left out because they're not they're not part of the AUKUS agreement. They're not part of the kind of sharing of this of the nuclear secrets at the highest level. And then as far as Canada goes, what programs have you heard from, whether it's whistleblowers or members of the government over the years that Canada has been actively involved in um, in this research and downed craft, et cetera? Of course, famously, uh, we have the Shag Harbor incident a number of years ago, something that I be, became that was one of the first real UFO incidents that I became really fascinated on uh, in a young at a younger age uh, for me. Uh, but beyond beyond Shag Harbor, what do we know of Canada and sightings and and uh, and testimony from 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 credible sources? Well, we know from uh, Canada that there have been uh, a lot of UFO incidents there and that all the intelligence on those incidents have been shared with the US and now we know with the Five Eyes partners and that uh, the US has, with the Canadian government, gone in to explore those incidents such as Shag Harbor uh, that, that you mentioned and that whatever craft were found, they were taken to the United States, particularly to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for reverse engineering. And, and that was the agreement. That was the that was the way it was all set up uh, immediately after the Second World War. That these Five Eyes countries they would share intelligence on any of these uh, craft that were found, um, and that the U.S. would take the lead in the study and reverse engineering of those craft. But later on in the 1960s, after the fallout from the from the Kennedy assassination, uh, with the uh, passage of Freedom of Information Act um, uh, legislation in the US, uh, these are, these projects began to be kind of shared uh, between the different Five Eyes nations. So you, you would have like Australia, Canada, Britain, like taking uh, a greater role in kind of like some of the follow-on of, of the study of these projects. And now we know from this uh, Maguire letter that Australia, uh, Britain, and the, and the US are uh, sharing the reverse engineering data on how to build these technologies. So I, I think, for example, that you know, the agreement that was reached between Australia, the US and, um, and the UK on, those, um, on building nuclear technologies, that was the cover for this particular program where some of these craft, these uh, reverse engineered craft, you know, whether we're talking flying saucer shaped craft or flying triangle shaped craft, that these are now being built in Australia and Australia is going to be developing uh, an indigenous um, kind of like space program, secret space program. Do you believe that, I mean, your reporting on this has been amazing. And of course, going back to Admiral Byrd uh, in Antarctica and of course what happened in Antarctica um, with the with the secret space program and the building and reverse engineering of, of craft from the Germans. After World War II, I mean, there's a lot of people think that, oh, the end of the Third Reich, and that was the end of it. Didn't, aren't fully aware, aren't, aren't brought up to speed on the fact that the Germans actually, a large portion of the production was moved to Antarctica, as you've reported, um, and many others have, have now come forward and reported as well. Um, so this production of reverse engineering of craft, which a lot of it has t takes place in Antarctica, has a lot of that moved away from there now or towards Australia and other places, or is a lot of it still happening in, Ant in Antarctica? Yes, well, what happened in Antarctica is a, is a big key to understanding what has really been this race between all the major nations in terms of finding, studying, reverse engineering 
offspring and putting into action whatever kind of craft that they found around the world. And, and the Germans did send a significant uh, contingent down to Antarctica and that they were able to survive uh, the end of the Second World War. They were able to deal with uh, successive attacks by the British military in 1946 and then by the uh, US Navy in 1947. Uh, the two successive summer Antarctic summers after the Second World War and after those attacks were successfully defeated, where the, uh, the Germans down there were able to put into uh, operation their reverse engineered flying saucer craft. So they actually built these things in the 1940s and defeated the, uh, the best uh, aircraft that the Navy had. Uh, that was sent against them in Antarctica. And so after that, agreements were reached between the Germans and the Americans. Uh, that's the background uh, behind Operation Paperclip. And the Germans were a key role in, in helping uh, reverse engineer these uh, technologies that were being found all over the world and being taken to places like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for, for study and to uh, various facilities around the United States. So what's happened is that more and more of the production of these uh, craft has been shifted out of the United States into Five Eyes countries like the UK, like Australia. And um, you know, what Australia offers is a vast continent uh, which with a very small population. And so you can have very large facilities there built in uh, places like Pine Gap in Australia and other areas um, in Australia where virtually no one knows what's going on. And it's because it's thousands of miles from the largest metropolitan areas, you, you can have uh, production of vast fleets of spacecraft. So I think that's what's happening, um, that uh, Australia has been chosen uh, to uh, host the uh, production of a lot of these reverse engineered spacecraft and that you know what's happening in Antarctica, uh, a, a lot of the facilities down there uh, continue to exist. They continue to be uh, used by various corporations, but more and more of that is being shifted into Australia because now Australia has a lot of advantages over Antarctica you know, because it's much more accessible. Um, it's in a friendly uh, country where legislation can be passed to prevent kind of external or other third countries from coming in, in particular China, Whereas in Antarctica, the big problem is China is building bases all over Antarctica. And so the more of these uh, reverse engineering facilities remain hidden in Antarctica, the more likely China is going to be able to build bases on the surface and kind of like find out what's going on down there. Fascinating. I mean, to me, the Antarctica piece of this is so fascinating. And you write about it extensively in your book on Antarctica. Um, but it's not just you, of course. We, we know Admiral Byrd who went down there with a large uh, Navy contingent to, I, I don't know, to attack the, 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 the remnants of the Third Reich in 1947. Most Americans have no idea that that actually happened. It's all very public. People can look at these documents everywhere, right? And he spoke about this in the Chilean newspaper, his, in, in his, uh, his interviews in the Chilean newspapers as well, about what he saw there. This is an admiral talking about what happened there. Well, that's exactly right. The, the Chilean newspapers, I mean, that's always been cited extensively as, you know, one of the strongest pieces of evidence that you know, this battle in Antarctica really did happen. Uh, there, there was also uh, documents and testimonies released uh, uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union uh, that uh, there was a battle in Antarctica and that the Soviets learned about this battle, that they actually cited uh, some uh, Navy seamen who reported about these flight sources coming out of the ocean and just attacking the uh, the ships and, of course, the aircraft that was launched by the, the Philippine Sea and whatever other aircraft carriers were in the vicinity, and those those were being de destroyed. So those those are kind of public records. Uh, we also know uh, from uh, former Navy personnel such as uh, William Tompkins, who actually was part of a Navy espionage program out of Naval Air Station San Diego from uh, 1942 up until 1945, that he said that the Navy were receiving briefings from uh, spies that were embedded in top aerospace uh, aviation companies in Nazi Germany, that the Germans had relocated a lot of their 
equipment and resources to Antarctica because they knew that uh, the, fourth, the Third Reich was doomed and so that they were relocating things and so that the Navy uh, was already cognizant of that in, uh, during the Second World War. And, and after the war was over, the, they would kind of send uh, people down there to find out. So, yeah, there's a lot of records showing that, uh, that Antarctica was the host of this German uh, contingent down there. And, and the one for me that kind of really stands out is that under Operation High Jump, you know, there were three task forces. I mean, there were two uh, naval task forces and, and an overland task force, and they converged on Queen Maud Land. So this is of that, that, that the, these naval task forces, there was an east, uh, there was a west, and there was a central task force that, conver that went around, you know, that went circumnavigated Antarctica and would converge opposite Queen Maud Land, which is exactly where Nazi Germany had established its bases uh, prior to the Second World War. Fascinating. You know, I just want to get you out of here on this because I see this comment and it kind of rises to the level for me. This is just a personal aside. I just want to say this, doctor. When someone just wants to shut down conversation about something in modern day parlance today, they'll say, that's racist. And then you can't have a conversation about it. Uh, or someone will say, that's woke from the other side. You can't have a conversation about it. The other big thing that I can't stand is when someone says, this is all a distraction. And then you can't have a conversation about it. And I'll see this on different UFO related videos and interviews. And as it relates to this disclosure and what's actually happening, I see people say, this is all a distraction. And or they'll say, they'll just throw out the term, this is a psyop which I've been talking about with you. Is this is part of this a psychological operation in order for the military industrial complex to make more money, right? Blaming some sort of an alien invasion, but it kind of covers over the real story, which is yes, we do have these craft, but now they're going to use it and say that it's nefarious when in fact it's not. Or So that part of it really bothers me that it's a distraction. When I hear that, it just makes my skin crawl. Or it's a psyop. And then they don't have any other discussion points to have a discussion about it. Well, what do you mean exactly it's a PSYOP? And what do you mean exactly it's a distraction? Let's have a conversation. Let's be specific. So when someone says that to you, doctor, this is a distraction. This is a PSYOP. What do you, how do you respond to that? Well, you know, I'd say there's a big difference between a PSYOP and a limited hangout. I mean, a PSYOP is intended to distract people's attention from some other issues that uh, are about to be revealed. And so you want to distract people by putting out some concocted, fabricated information. So some there's a lot of people in the truth of community that think that this whole the whole UFO narrative that's now unfolding, uh, UAPs, that this is a big psyop. Well, I think they're making a mistake. This, in fact, it's a limited hangout. What they're doing is that they're trying to get ahead of something that they cannot control, that the uh, UFO issue, the extraterrestrial issue, has been an issue that's been around since the 1940s, successfully covered up with all of these advanced technology built from the retrieved spacecraft from extraterrestrial civilizations and the extraterrestrials themselves visiting us. Uh, you have uh, the remnants of ancient spacecraft uh, that are activating and that there's kind of... Uh, uh, a lot of rumors that these are about to reveal themselves publicly. So I think what's happening is that uh, you have the intelligence community and, and the military communities kind of like trying to catch up, trying to get ahead of a story that they can't break. I mean, you know, those those that are sticking to, to this UAP issue being a distraction, you know, they have a very limited understanding of just the extent of this. I mean, if you go to that Maguire letter, I mean, it says... Uh, that in 1950, the Canadian government had an interest in this. And it was talking about Wilbert Smith, who was a senior minister in the Canadian Department of Transportation. And he said uh, that he had been talking to uh, top level officials in the United States, scientists, that said that uh, this flying saucer issue were classified even higher than, the, than thermonuclear weapons. So fancy that. That's how important this issue was back in the 1950s. And so today it continues to be that kind of significance. And all the other issues are subordinate to that. So I think people who think that the UFO issue is a distraction, you know, they really need to read up on the literature and understand that this is really what's happening is a limited hangout. 
I think you're right about that. I think anyone who says this is a distraction hasn't read one book on the subject. I'm just going to say that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've read 30 books on it. If they have read 30 books on it and they still think it's a distraction, I would be shocked. But chances are they haven't read any of the literature on it. They haven't read any of the reports on it. Um, and there's plenty of really great places to start. I mean, even beyond your books, if someone thinks it's a distraction, what's one or two books that you would recommend someone start with to want to, to educate themselves on this subject? Well, you know, when it comes to Antarctica, I, I, I definitely recommend uh, my book, Antarctica's Hidden History. Uh, when it comes to just understanding the scope of what's going on. Uh, Stephen Greer in 2001 released his Disclosure Project book where there were 60 witnesses, the, the, the first-hand eyewitness testimonies of 60 witnesses to the extent of what's going on. So that, that book uh, was very profound in my kind of like awakening and I think it continues to be important today. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's a great book by Stephen Greer as well. Dr. Michael Sala, great to have you here for a great discussion on this. And this is an unbelievable letter from a member of parliament in the Canadian government. Uh, this is really remarkable. Thank you for joining us and thank you for adding some great context to this story. Thank you for having me, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.